the tigers, not fuck the humans. Because <laughs> mom tells them, don't play with the food. <laughs> When I uh, hear this song, I want to be Iceland. Uh, you, lo- uh, you look at the uh, mountain, uh, that mountain is a fucking troll. Whatever happens in Mariupol stays in Mariupol. And he doing all shit, as you said. Uh, oh, it's Vasya Medvedev! Uh, one of my best friends growing up in Los Angeles was uh, Zoe Kravitz. <gasps> fuck you! No, fuck me! No, fuck you! Maybe. I uh, just like to work on contrast. We are the top China. We are so... We're gonna invade Taiwan. One, fuck you, Japan. <coughs> I'm going to, um, you Did know, have these... COVID? Uh, yes, yes. Mm-hmm. yes. <laughs> um, but here it's completely different. Okay, hey, Helgi, uh, you're on the lineup tonight. Do you want to open for Bill Burr? I'm like, <laughs> good time of the day, ladies and gentlemen. This is a underground podcast. My name is Sviatsakikevich. <laughs> here is uh, Dmitro Bilos. And also here. Alex Kachura, aka Alex Magdak, and guest straight from Iceland, Helgi Steiner! Привет, Ukraine! I'm doing your favorite thing. <laughs> This guy had I, literally like uh, the first thing I said to <laughs> you were the you opened for me also uh, during my first show here mm-hmm. in 2018, and you had literally the greatest joke, greatest bad joke I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> Which was, why do the tigers not fuck the humans? Because mom tells them, don't play with the food. <laughs> and at a point I'm thinking like, no, 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 he's not going to end on that joke and bring me on stage, is he? <laughs> yeah, he did. <laughs> so I go on stage, I'm like, hey guys. No, it, it, was, it was really good um, because... Uh, one of the things I do love about uh, it, it's sort it, it's a lost art form in comedy I think um, this sort of like punchline you know it's it's like if you watch Johnny Carson like back in the day mm-hmm. Richard Pryor goes on Johnny Carson and he's like uh, you know or like the old style joke oh my neighbor is so stupid and everyone's like how stupid is he mm-hmm. and uh, like that kind of joke form uh, I think is really underappreciated. Maybe. I uh, <laughs> just like to work on contrast. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. I'm doing a really bad joke and they go uh, next comedian and the uh, visitors go like, oh, thanks God, uh, it's not all uh, night of it, but these bad jokes. So you, your idea of a good show is to lower the expectations <laughs> right yeah. away. Not lower, uh, but uh, <laughs> do some... Uh, Uh, contrast between contrast. Make the contrast. Yeah, 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 yeah. between hosts and comedians. Yeah, it's it's yeah, still yeah. You, you can word it any way you want. Your idea is I'm gonna bomb so badly in the first one minute <laughs> that everything I do from there on out is just perfect. <laughs> yeah, and I actually I like English events in in the underground stand up because uh, when uh, Sviat is acting in English, he sounds like Nico Bellic from GTA 4. <laughs> That's yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. So you just say, hey, cousin, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Nico. I, I always feel I was I I always felt so bad in, G- in GTA 4 when I hung up the phone on him. It's like, hey, cousin, we can go meet, have drink, go bowling. He's like, no, no, I have to go uh, shoot grandma and steal car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, by, by the way, what are you told about Dublin in the beginning? Uh, Dublin? In China, yeah. Uh, there oh, dubbing, all, dubbing, all, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, all the Before movies. Before talking about China, uh, let's uh, talk about our uh, audience, about yeah, a little Helgi, introduction. A little, yeah, yeah. Sure, sure, uh, sure. You should do this. Uh, Or a uh, Helgi should do this. <laughs> no, th- this is my producer. He, he, he knows all my... He's, he's my Alex Magdak! Woo! <laughs> um, yeah, so I... I uh, well, привет Ukraine, jak sprav? Моя українська дуже погана. Um, I'll do my best up. Ми б могли робити подкаст на українському язикі, але видіть, як він спілкується на українському. Отстойно, повний, повний бу. Тому прийшлось, тому нам прийшлось говорити на англійському. Це теж отстойно достатньо, але сильно краще, якщо б він говорив на українському з нами. Тому, ребят, поймите. What I like here is when uh, a foreigner says that he's Russian or Ukrainian is very bad. Like, моя українська дуже погана. Everybody is like, oh no, it's great, it's super <laughs> great. It's, 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 the, it's the same thing with China. China. You know this from China. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, your Chinese better than mine. I'm like, I don't think that's accurate. But, but here, but here it's completely different. If you speak Chinese to a Chinese person here, he's like. <gasps> 
I was I was getting a I was getting a, a metro. Uh, so last time I was here, I had a well, Ukrainian girlfriend. Uh, so I spent the night at her place, and I was getting a metro. But I, I was somewhere outside of Kiev, like in the uh, districts of Kiev, and I needed to get back to Maidan, and I didn't know where the metro was. So, you know, it was like the 90s. You know, I, my phone was dead. I go into a cafe. I'm like, okay, maybe I can ask someone here. And I hear two Chinese guys. I was like, oh, cool. I can ask these guys where the metro is. And I say, hey, boys, you know where the nearest metro is? Now, when you're two... Chinese people living in Ukraine and an Icelandic guy wants to ask you where the metro is Something in Chinese. Chinese. It doesn't process. They were like, <laughs> I was like, um, you know, you know, they, they, they didn't answer me in Chinese because I don't think their brain. I see you two have a good podcast about China. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so but yeah, but yeah, I'll, 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 I'll get, I'll get, I'll get back to I'll get back to the. Uh, no, I want to say main information about Helgi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Helgi, comedian from Iceland. Yeah. So I'm, I'm born and lived in China. How long? I'm not born in China. Uh, oh. If Sorry? I wa- if I was, uh, I, I would be a- educated. Uh, yes, educated. exactly. I'd be educated. I would mm-hmm. have a wife uh, and a job and a purpose in life. Uh, mm-hmm. But I don't. Uh, no, I'm. I'm, so I'm, uh, I'm yeah, I actually, I'm, I read the poster, uh, your poster, and it says that you're educated in China. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, so you don't no. have manners at all. Educate like- exactly. No, no, no manners. I spit on the street. <laughs> uh, I cut. I cut in line. You shit uh, on the street. I, I <laughs> <laughs> uh, only after you know this. Uh, Uh, and also you uh, second time in Kiev, yeah. Second time in uh, Kiev, yeah. You yeah. was here twenty nine eighteen, eighteen, yeah. Yeah. Same time uh, around December. When I go uh, my joke about uh, tigers, yeah, oh. you have a uh, here a performance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, also you have a performance yesterday uh, on December of. Uh, 2021. Yes, okay. yes. Yeah. It's for a protocol uh, to our audience. Yeah. Sure, sure. I'll, I'll give a just basic background of myself. Okay, so I'm born in Iceland, 1989. Mm-hmm. Uh, my parents, uh, my mother and my father, they divorced when I was about five years old. So my mom moved to America. My dad stayed in Iceland. Sorry, uh, my dad moved with her to oh. America. So my dad wanted to become a, an actor. So he studied acting in Los Angeles. My mom was there to be a lawyer. So we lived in Los Angeles in the early 90s. So it's like your mom was making money and he was studying. Yeah, yeah. So he, it was like being a comedian with any, you know, wife of any type. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, I'm, he's following the dream. My mom was doing the actual work. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, uh, well, was it okay for both of them? Yeah, yeah, it was fine. It was fine. My, 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 their parents, so my grandparents, uh, they owned a steel factory in Iceland. So, mm-hmm. so they were they were quite rich. They had a lot of money, so they were able to support uh, all of us in the arts. And so how, there was, how old was your father when, when he? <clears> so when he, he was tw- he was twenty six when I was born. So about you know thirty one, about the same age as me. So same age as me. He's going and, and to. He just went to school. There. Yeah, he actually he went. Uh, he studied in the same class as Paul Rudd, actually. Mm. Uh, the actor. So mm-hmm. they, he was studying acting at that time. He did Shakespeare, um, and uh, he did a lot of. He was actually he's he's a really good actor actually. Um, <clears throat> but then they divorced when I was five years old. My mom stayed in America. My dad moved back to Iceland. Uh, but they split custody. So mm-hmm. uh, six months I would spend in Iceland and six months in America. So or like and then later I would spend summers in Iceland and school year in America. And then after five years change, you know. So uh, I never really had a home. <clears throat> I was always, you mm-hmm. know, I was always uh, in. What place did you like more, America? Mm. W- what was like? You, okay. know, you are the, uh, uh, Megabond. used to Mega Bond, yeah. Mega Bond, no. Mega Bond. <laughs> I'm, I'm drunk. I'm drunk Bond. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I really, I, I did enjoy Los Angeles, uh, L- L.A. in the ninth. Like, if you watch the uh, the OJ uh, on Netflix. O.J. Simpson um, documentary. Yeah, I know uh, this guy, but I don't uh, remember. No, no. So, Did so Los a- Los Angeles in the '90s was a really, really interesting time. Uh, oh, O.J. Simpson <laughs> is a black guy. Uh, that, who, I love uh, that. That's the, I love that. That's the only thing you know about him. <laughs> well, uh, uh, there was a very big uh, court about uh, court case. Yeah, he killed yeah. O.J. Simpson. Uh, his killed his wife Nicole yeah. Simpson yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or Nicole Brown Kidman uh, and her lover. Um, and uh, there was a huge court case uh, because of this. Mm-hmm. So this was in 1995. Uh, but the thing was, it was two years after the L.A. riots. Mm-hmm. So in 1993, um, there was uh, a guy who was uh, beat up by the police. 
yeah, uh, yeah. Rodney King. So he was beat up by the police. Now, the people, uh, the black people in America have always known this. Like, this happens to them all the time. But this was the first time they had it on video. Mm-hmm. So some guy was recording this. And uh, Arsenio Hall, who did the, the TV show in the 90s in L.A. as well, was saying, like, uh, this is great. Like, this is the first time we can actually have proof. Mm-hmm. Like, thi- like it's we have it on video. Fruit it's stale station or something like this, yeah? Sorry, what? Uh, how it's called? Uh, fruit something... What do you mean? Uh, I saw a picture. Oh. They call a fruit whale station about uh, cops. They uh, killed a black guy. No? It, well, I uh, think they, it's they, a they, real they, uh, story. They, mm-hmm. they, do a okay. lot of, they do a lot of that. But this is the first time that black people in America said, like, see, now you have proof. Mm-hmm. But the thing is, uh, the court case was in Simi Valley, which is where a lot of the police live. So the people on the jury said, ah, yeah, nothing happened. It's fine. Mm-hmm, you know, they, mm-hmm. can, they can beat up the black guy. It's no worries. Uh, so after that, when they were all acquitted, um, there were riots in Los Angeles. So the black people in South Central uh, were rioting, and it was crazy. Uh, now, two years later, you know, O.J. Simpson, who was a very famous athlete, very famous actor. He was in Naked Gun. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, yeah, he, he killed his wife, and he killed her <laughs> lover. Uh, Ron Goldman and Nicole Brown Simpson. Uh, or and his wife's lover, was he black or white? No, he was white. He was white. Uh, so he was like a 27-year-old guy who was just, you know, her lover. And, uh, uh, I'm but, sorry, but, just a second. How to ask, uh, did you, uh, do you bajori? Are you okay? No, 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 <laughs> no, no, no. Even a bajori, spray, it's like uh, a spray. Like, fresh. Um, is there enough energy in you? Yeah. I'm talking not about Helge. I'm talking about Dimon. Dimon, <laughs> do you okay? Yeah. Do you spray? I'm okay. Uh, I'm okay. You okay? <laughs> It's very interesting. I love it. It's like the first 10 minutes of the podcast. What are you doing? <laughs> Masturbation and black people actually, killing actually, others. It seems to me that uh, I came with Helgi. I'm his translator. Uh. And I'm just communicate, uh, help him to communicate with you. And like every Ukrainian translator, Helgi is going to fuck me in the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> Look, all I need to know is who is my translator, who is my fuckboy, and who is the KGB handler, you know? <laughs> We don't have. KGB and he laughed here. at that, so he, so that's him. <laughs> uh, no, no, but so, so to finish finish up on that. Yeah, um, yeah. So um, uh, basically, the reason so he got acquit he was acquitted on that because they were kind of threatening another riot. So everybody, the, the black people in Los Angeles, and they, they knew he was guilty, but for them it was sort of like ah, we're getting back at you. Mm-hmm. Like, we're getting back at the police. If he's innocent, that means that we won. So he was basically, O.J. Simpson was the first black man in America to ever get acquitted because he was black. Uh, and then the HBO, no, the uh, Netflix series uh, does a very good job of explaining, like, uh, just how screwed up America is in terms of, um, you know, showmanship and <clears throat> with the legal system and everything. Uh, but, uh, yeah, no, it's, uh, so, so, yeah, I was living there in the 1990s uh, during that period. Uh, and then I moved back to Iceland, uh, stayed there for a few years. Uh, and then when I finished school, uh, I went to China uh, mm-hmm. to study Chinese. Uh, I did my Sorry, b- I'd like to ask one more question about uh, the United States. Yeah, when yeah. you live there uh, as a white people, of course, as a white, as a white person. As, as the whitest of yeah. the white. Yeah. <laughs> did you feel uh, some kind of guilt that you're... Um, treated in a different way by the police i didn't uh because uh, well okay so let me put and it this is is it common for white people in america that they it depends like, they, i i, they I would say shame for it depends being. on their heritage all right so if you are uh if you're like fifth generation fourth generation american white guy you know whatever maybe yeah because that means that your, your great family had, great, had some you know it's it's a chance that had there some was stuff yeah iceland we were slaves like we were uh, subjugated by Denmark, we were owned by Norway. Um, we, you know, were very poor. We were always being killed by volcanoes. We, we, we don't have a military. Uh, we are not the big empire. We have three hundred or maybe four hundred thousand people in the whole country. So we are not. Our heritage is kind of clean, and that's kind of like uh, why I go to these places around the world that may be dangerous. Because people ask you like, where are you go? Where are you from? I'm from Iceland. Yeah, no, I, I, nobody, I, nobody has a fight with Iceland. So, um, and if they do, they're a dick. Uh, but uh, you know, it's it's like beating up a baby. Uh, so um, for me, 
I never felt any personal guilt. Now, I do know that obviously I was treated differently. Um, but I, I do think that, like, you know, as long as you're aware of that uh, and, you know, you are on the side of we need to change this, uh, I think I think that's okay. You don't have to feel th- – th- there's this – there is this feeling of you, you need to feel guilty because of who you're born. <laughs> like, you're born as this. So, therefore, you need to feel guilty because you're being treated different. It's like, no, I mean, I understand that, but why don't we just change it? Why don't we just make sure that everyone's equal? Yeah, it's you a good it? point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah Demon, did you agree with this? <laughs> Absolutely. The, yes. Very good goal. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, so when you so, ca- when you call the FSB later, just tell them I did a good job. <laughs> so, Helge, uh, mm-hmm. don't have I misunderstood that Demon uh, uh, such a uh, something He's a KGB uh, like... agent. No, He's no. Not. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to say uh, that you should uh, think that Demon. Uh, something like um, get it, lost in our podcast. It's a, it's a, bit, it's uh, a okay uh, behavior on on uh, every podcast, not yeah. in English. Right, <laughs> it's right. okay for Dimon. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Just uh, for you know. I love. I love that your name is Dimon because, mm-hmm. like, if you say that in America, like, what's your name? Demon. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, demon of podcasts. Demon of yeah. podcasts. Yeah. <laughs> of. Very fun to hear this from a guy who call Helgi. Helgi. <laughs> no, yeah. it's Hell Guy. Hell Guy. <laughs> Hell Guy. Uh, what is your uh, f- uh, main professional for now? So right now I work as a Chinese translator. Ah. Uh, so I work uh, for a pharmaceutical company in Iceland, mm-hmm. and I'm helping them get onto the Chinese market. Uh, that's that. That's the job that pays. Uh, mm-hmm. This, you know, comedy and uh, movie making. Well, that, that's like my dream. So, mm-hmm. uh, but that doesn't pay, as you guys know. Mm-hmm. You know, so you, you, every comedian when they start out, before uh, they, they say like, <clears throat> comedy is your hobby until you can make it work. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like uh, every every even my dad, who was an actor, when I told him I want to do stand up comedy, he's like. Ah. <laughs> because he saw like okay i'm gonna have to pay you <laughs> and, and look i i have a son mm. as well if my son says dad i want to be a poet i'm like oh, God damn it. what do your father do you do now uh my father is a contractor so he builds uh in iceland he's a builder mm. but he does a, a a tv show where he shows people how to build things in their house no tector it would be he's, he's an actor so he he combines his two professions which is uh, building and acting <laughs> it would be funny if your father was making the pantomime when he's building something yeah it's, it's like a mime in paris you know <laughs> oh so many things to build here <laughs> to build or not to build you know? <laughs> uh, what's uh, what are your expectations from comedy Uh, not only really. <laughs> not really. Yes. No, I, I. Okay, so what I'm doing right. This is the first time that I actually have an opportunity to combine the two things I'm interested in, which is mm-hmm. international relations mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and stand-up comedy. Mm-hmm. So the TV show I'm doing right now, Ragnarök, for Upcast, uh, which is the Icelandic version of Netflix. Um, <clears throat> the, uh, what Ukra- is its name? Upcast. 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 Yeah. Like uh, a podcast. It- Upcast. Upcast. It's yeah. not downcast, not yeah, upcast, yeah. it's upcast. <laughs> uh, so this is the first time. So Ukraine is the first episode. Um, <laughs> and it is the first time in my life that I actually have the opportunity to combine my real passions and do mm-hmm. what I really want to do, which is to make... Uh, so, okay, you, we watch documentaries about, you know, like uh, Ross Kemp. Uh, you watch documentaries about, um, you know, the, it's like all these people around the world who go, like Louis Thoreau. Like he goes to America, he goes to, you know, Mexico, he sees the cartels and goes to war regions and everything. And it's mm-hmm. always so serious. It's always like, yes, we are here in this country and mm-hmm. everyone is dying and it's, it's horrible and, uh, you know, we're, we're all going to die. And I was like, why does it have to be like that? Like the reason I think that, you know, Daily Show and John Oliver and everything is so popular is because people are so tired of being preached to. They're tired of this um, format where everything has to be serious. It's like, okay, yes, it is a serious thing, but we're humans. Mm -hmm. So can we do it like in a certain way where we can be funny, Mm -hmm. we can do comedy, Mm -hmm. but still explain the serious part? That's mm-hmm. what I'm doing basically. So that's why, like, like for you show the complete life, not yeah, just you show exactly. I mean, this serious is serious Donbass stuff. Well, I mean, like, like so. For example, yesterday <laughs> I went to you know Chernobyl, 
which was not funny. Uh, it was horrible. <laughs> and tomorrow, we came quite happy after that. Yeah, yeah. You uh, look uh, like uh, shiny. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone's yeah. glowing. You know? It was a Disneyland. <laughs> my, 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 my fr the first time I went to Chernobyl, my friend uh, um, he, in Iceland, he had the best. He had the best uh, saying about that because uh, you know comedians, if we don't get paid, they say, "Oh, he did the show just for exposure." He said, Helgi went to Chernobyl just for the exposure. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, I went to Chernobyl. I went to, um, so tomorrow I'm going to Mariupol. Uh, <clears throat> I'm going on a 14-hour train ride to Mariupol. That's one thing I miss about China, fast mm. trains. Uh, so <laughs> yeah. it'll be like very Soviet train. And Actually, there are also slow trains in China. And slow trains in China are much uh, worse than slow trains in Ukraine. Okay, very Believe good. Me. But I, I asked, like, like what, what do I do them? for 14 hours? It's like, just drink vodka and play you're, chess you're like gonna, Truslav. You're going to uh, like play dream chess? that nobody's going to steal do, yeah. anything mm. from you. Nobody's going to steal? Y yeah, hope that nobody's going to steal anything from you. Well, I hope not. I have thousands of dollars worth of uh, camera equipment, so... Uh, d don't uh, don't air that. Um, no, I, but it, it won't be. Right, I'll be fine. I mean, it's uh, who knows? Who knows? Hell yeah. <coughs> As you guys say, good luck. Just have fun. <laughs> uh, tell us to our audience uh, what you do here. You going to Chernobyl? Going to Mariupol? Because you a journalist and yep. you making a Netflix uh, so documentary. Yeah? Basically, Iceland, yeah. Netflix. Iceland Netflix. Yeah. Iceland. <laughs> but it's yeah, Netflix documentary. Um, basically, the, the the idea of the show is just as I explained. It's um, a show where um, I use comedy to explain serious things. Mm -hmm. So you know, for the first episode of Ukraine. <coughs> I'm going to, um, you Did know, you have these, COVID? Uh, yes, yes, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, Omicron. Um, uh -huh. Okay, uh, okay. <laughs> And uh, I, I love the fact that too, like you know, before I came here, it was like when Omicron started mm -hmm. up, it was like Ukraine said, "You are forbidden to enter Ukraine <laughs> unless you have been to these places." <laughs> and also, like I, I was landing in, in Budapest on the way here, and there was like, "You cannot enter Hungary." <laughs> and I was like, well, what do I do then? So I'll just like, fuck it. I'll just go and see what happens. I landed at Budapest airport. No border security, no border control. There's one fucking cop and he's on Tinder when we're walking through the gates. And I'm like, I was so nervous that I would not be allowed to entry, but nobody cares. Mm -hmm. uh, Doesn't it seem to you that Omicron sounds more like IT startup? Not, <laughs> That's not, a not good the... point, yeah. <laughs> Sorry uh, for interrupt. Uh, you tell about Mariupol. And yes, uh, so yeah, anyway, so yeah, I'm going to, uh, so yeah, so I'm doing these documentaries where I'm explaining uh, serious things, but using comedy. Uh, and my, I'm going to Mariupol tomorrow. Uh, I'll be in Mariupol for three days. Uh, but during that time, I'm visiting several uh, villages mm -hmm. uh, around the Donetsk region, so right on the border. And uh, it's my first time ever in a war zone. Uh, mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, I think that it's, it's an important thing to explain because uh, I think many people in Western Europe and in America, mm -hmm. uh, after Euromaidan, you know, mm -hmm. after um, the war in Donbass, the, the first one, uh, when the ceasefire came into effect, people were like, oh, it's over. You know, mm -hmm. they, they stopped thinking about it. They're thinking about it now because the buildup on the border. But um, the reason I want to go there is because uh, I want to show something that maybe many people have forgotten, which is that there really is a war still going on. They violate the cease. I mean, the rebels and the Ukrainian military violate the ceasefire every day. It's every night they they shoot. There's uh, artillery, there's uh, AK-47, there's, you know, fighting on the region. And uh, there's 100,000 people who have been displaced, uh, are refugees in their own country on the border region. So I think that this is a very uh, important story to tell. Mm -hmm. uh, you said rebels. What does it mean? Uh, uh, rebels, rebels. Rebels. Yeah, there is no rebels. There is a Russian Federation army. They, everyone know this <laughs> shit. Yeah. Uh, okay, that's fine. Yeah, yeah, we can say that then. Yeah, you know, <laughs> it, it's, it's it, they call them Russian-backed separatists. It's like, yeah, um, sep they, they did not shoot Malaysian Airlines with AK. I mean, <laughs> uh, how do you wanna tell funny about it? Um, so that okay so so that part is not exactly i'm not making fun of it mm. uh but like what i was saying yesterday at the comedy show you know that uh, i'll explain the serious part which is that the war is still going on people are refugees and uh it's a very very serious thing but then i also explain like for example the comedy show last night that russia is kind of like a drunk uh, guy at a bar 
mm. like in international relations. It's like you go to a bar, some guy's like, I'm going to beat you up, I'm going to kick your ass. And, and it's like, why? Nobody is threatening you. It's just because your dick is small. And, uh, you know, you, you really just... Uh, it's ba- Russia right now is where America was in 2016. Mm-hmm. It's make Russia great again. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, that mm-hmm. is their idea. I mean, they... I, I think, first of all, it has something to do with Vladimir Putin himself. I mean, Vladimir Putin was a KGB officer in Berlin mm-hmm. when the, the wall came down. And I think um, when he had to burn all the documents and confront the protesters outside, he was humiliated. So I think for him, it's like a personal revenge on Europe. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He needs to sort of like, fuck you. No, fuck me. No, fuck you. So that's mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <clears throat> basically been his whole idea the entire time. And I think it's also that Russia never really came to terms with the fall of the Soviet Union. Mm-hmm. You know, there's, um, I don't know. I mean, uh, uh, so d- during the Soviet Union time, during Cold War, Americans used to say that what Soviet Union used to do was uh, they would throw as much wet spaghetti against the wall and see what sticks. So that's basically what they're doing with Ukraine. They're saying like, yeah, Ukraine's going to join NATO. It's like, well, that's not the plan right now. It's like, oh, well, NATO is, is sending soldiers. No, you're doing that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But what they really want to say is Ukraine should not be independent. Poland should not be independent. Lithuania should not be independent. This should be make Soviet Union great again. <laughs> and yeah. do do you think Western Euro- European <coughs> leaders they understand no. this, or it's that, just that, about the no. Eastern Europe? Who, who Use, what I hate is this because I love Ukraine. I I li- this is my favorite country outside of Iceland. Uh, I have never had a bad meal in Ukraine. I've never met someone who's been mean. Everyone is so helpful. Everyone is so friendly. This country is, I would say, the best kept secret in Europe. Um, And I hate the fact that Ukraine is being used as sort of a fishing rod for Europe, Mm -hmm. for Western powers. So it's like, um, it's a buffer zone. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, we'll see what Russia does. Uh, is Russia going to attack you? No, no, no. We'll use Ukraine as a, mm-hmm. sort of a buffer zone. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. the fact that Ukraine is being used in that way, I think is very, first of all, diplomatically is very disingenuous. It's uh, very mean-spirited. And I think Europe should take a lot more responsibility for the way they use Ukraine in this diplomatic uh, nightmare. That's just my my, my you, you you think they did the same mistake in during the second world war? Yes. Oh, absolutely absolutely. I mean, Ukraine has been fucked over so many times unnecessarily that um it, it's not like okay, I mean uh, so during you know, okay, World War II, I mean, everybody was being fucked over <laughs> obviously, but uh it was it was a diplomatic conundrum that didn't need to happen. I mean, when the the hunger happened in Ukraine during that time, I mean, there was there were so many instances where the West could have stepped in. But they just they don't care. You know, I mean, the same reason why tourists don't go to Ukraine as much as they go to Paris, you know, is the mm-hmm. same reason why when shit goes down, they don't care as much because <laughs> uh you know, it's like they, they they don't see Ukraine. And I hope that with my show, you know, they'll see it more. And what do Icelandic people think about Ukraine? Are they more aware of this problem or I think the right, situation is the same? Uh, right now, they are kind of aware of it. Um, it's uh, during, I remember like 2013, for, like, after Euromaidan, after um, the protests and the war. Yeah, there was sort of, uh, I remember talking to people thinking, uh, like, well, I mean, this is this is an obvious invasion of Ukraine. But people said, like, well, people in Crimea are, you know, they're not just Ukrainians, they're Tatars, they're um, Russians as well. So, like, 90% were actually supporting. Um, and that that is obviously fallout of Soviet Union time, you know. So, uh, older generations of Ukrainians may still have a feeling towards Russia. You know, they feel like we are not Ukrainians. We are Ukrainians, but we're also Soviet people. We're also Russians. Um, but people in the East obviously rely a lot on Russia. You know, they rely on Russian economy uh, for selling of natural gas and resources. Um, and they were thinking, well, hey, I mean, if, if most people in Crimea support Russia and Russia comes and invades them, uh, if they're happy, then, um, you know, I don't care. But that's not really the point. Mm-hmm. The point is... What's the point? The point is... Um, 
<clears throat> you need to play by the international rules. Mm-hmm. It's the same thing with China right now, with Taiwan, Hong Kong. It doesn't matter what the people. Uh, even if you invade a country, and most it's hey, I mean, when was the last time? Oh yeah, uh, <laughs> uh, Hunger. Uh, no, uh, Austria when Hitler annexed Austria, and then Czechoslovakia. It's like oh, I have no more territorial ambitions. Ah, okay, we trust mm-hmm. you. Power is the worst thing that it's happens like to hunger. a human. Yeah, it's like drugs. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You, th- it's never enough. Mm-hmm. I mean, imagine like you—you you guys have been at a job, right? Where I mean, you're, we're comedians, so we don't have jobs really. But you, you've been at a job some point, right? Mm-hmm. Have you have you known somebody who gets a promotion? Mm. Their change in attitude. So a person is working next to you on the same level, and then that person gets promotion, mid-level promotion. Mm-hmm. The change in attitude, just a little bit of power. And uh, I think that uh, invading other lands is like uh, doing comedy when you uh, razibal. When you're killing. <laughs> yeah, when yeah. You're yeah. Killing, when you're when killing, you get a great it. laugh. You're, you're like, oh my stop. God, I did a really yeah. good joke. It, there it, has it, to be it's, it's another like, laugh. Okay, I killed it. Then I can leave. Everything's over for me. And you just go and yeah, fuck yourself that's like <laughs> Putin would <laughs> Well, that's the, I mean, are you here? You with us? Mm-hmm. Well, What I, do you think about this? About what? About Crimea or about Razibal? About uh, the the uh, <coughs> yes, yes, uh, yes, 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 connection. Connection. About connection between uh, the power of mm-hmm. uh, people and the power of a comedian. We're talking about uh, this. You are yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I hear, but um, I think a little, a little bit connection between it, because Putin is unfunny. But Zelensky is hilarious. <laughs> He's so oh. so like a political. No, everyone thinks so. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's hilarious for maybe one million people in Ukraine. Yeah, from thirty. Well, I, I think that's. I mean, <laughs> but that's the thing is that um, you know he was. I mean, obviously, we did a TV show right where he became president, and mm-hmm. then he actually became. I, I love. I just. I love the sequence of presidents in Ukraine. Right, it's like a por- por- showman for old fucks in Ukraine. Is he really? Yeah, because he used to do this thing like where he's like Instagramming. He's like, "This is not so." Like, um, uh, one of the things I liked about Zelensky was uh, during the beginning of coronavirus. I was working at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Iceland, and uh, there was a bus of Ukrainians that came back from Wuhan, mm-hmm. and there were protesters mm-hmm. who attacked this bus. And they were yeah. like trying to prevent them from going. And he went on TV and said, what the fuck is wrong with you? Like, these are your citizens. These are your brothers. Mm-hmm. These are your people. Um, and I thought like that was a very good thing for him to do. But um, apparently he does that a lot. He used to go on Instagram a lot and like say like, this is not right. This is wrong. This is. But now he has the office of the president to do this. Mm-hmm. So he'll, he's kind of like a social justice warrior uh, in Ukraine for many reasons. Is that true? I mean, uh, yeah, I think um, uh, well, he uh, maybe it's true and maybe not. Maybe many people argue about that. Mm. Uh, some people say that he just want to hype and says what people want him to. S- maybe, to, maybe. To are, say you, are you saying he just goes by what the audience wants him to do to get yeah. a laugh? Yeah, that's exactly. why you never have comedians as presidents. You know? <laughs> <clears throat> Can uh, you describe your experience in comedy? Um, well. Uh, not monetary uh <laughs> no money but no no i um it it's i think it's uh it it's the best form of psychology uh, you know? for you for you uh, what for is your experience uh how I, many years how uh, did you what, start what, what you so yeah start? so i started stand up comedy in beijing uh i was uh, in china in 2014 who's inspired you uh oh i mean uh, you know bill burr louis ck mm. um Uh, I, uh, Jim Jeffries, I used mm-hmm. to watch those guys a lot. Um, and then, yeah, when I went to study in 2014 in Beijing. Did any of those guys do show in Beijing? Or uh, uh, none, Louis C.K. did a show in Beijing. I actually, I, I got to open for Bill Burr once uh, in Iceland. I open for him. We shared the same stage. I, w- I was on before him mm-hmm. uh, at a comedy club in Iceland. And mm. uh, yeah, it was uh, like these guys were, you know, my heroes starting out in stand-up comedy. But in Beijing in 2014, when I started my master's degree, uh, I found uh, there was a comedy club in Beijing, uh, mm-hmm. Comedy Club China. And uh, I did my first open mic there. And it was like the first shot of heroin. 
I was like, <gasps> this is the greatest thing ever. <laughs> um, please don't, please. <laughs> Thanks, man. No worries, man. <laughs> uh, it was my, uh, you, you can you can shut it off. It's a, or is it, how, many, how much battery is left? Okay, then we're good. We're good. Um, so yeah, so so um, uh, I started stand-up comedy in Beijing in 2014. I did my first open mic, uh, and it, yeah, I just like I couldn't get enough because I had never had an opportunity where I can express myself in such a good manner. Like I can go on stage and tell people good jokes, and you know everyone laughs, and it was so um, fulfilling to do mm -hmm. that and. Uh, I sort of realized if I can figure out, like, the best way to understand a country is to find out what makes people in that country laugh. Mm -hmm. Because everyone, you know, every country is different. Every country mm -hmm. has, like, this, that, you know, that is different culturally, but everyone laughs at something. And have you ever tried uh, Chinese open mics? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I, I did. I, I have 10 minutes of Chinese material. Uh, what makes uh, Chinese people laugh? Well, I mean, obviously, I go on stage. Even though I speak Chinese, I go on stage. They're like, "Ni bushi chongguan." You're not Chinese, so they want to hear, you know, um, foreigner jokes. Like, oh, you know, uh, the food is very spicy. The because uh, uh, what yeah. what uh, what uh, like uh, I also lived in China. I'm sorry for talking about myself a little, a little bit, dude. I, I uh, have I have dominated this conversation. Please, what somebody else discouraged talk. me when I did Chinese uh, stand up. I wanted to to make a joke and to say that uh, I'm not Chinese, mm -hmm. and I thought that everybody's gonna laugh at this. It's rude, and everybody's like, "Yeah, we know." You are Chinese. not Chinese, <laughs> Shima. <laughs> yeah, and th th they like take everything to heart. Uh, it's too literal. Hard. There's yeah, no too irony too in literally. China. Too literal. Yeah, yeah. We we used to um, <clears throat> we used to joke about that. You know, when we um, uh, you know we we drink a lot in China, obviously. <laughs> um, and uh, my roommate, my Chinese roommate, like, w w what you're drinking again? It's like, yes, it's very good for health. <laughs> Really? <laughs> like no, no, I'm killing myself. It's a joke. It's irony. They're like and they don't they don't have that. So um in my experience doing stand up comedy in China. So like for example you said you're not Chinese on mm -hmm. stage, right? What I would say is uh uh Yeah, so I'm uh, I'm I'm not from China. Uh, I'm from I'm, 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 I'm is, Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, so, so so I'd say like I'm I'm you guys this may shock you guys, but I'm not Chinese. Oh. Like, oh, oh, oh. I'm I'm from Xinjiang. Mm. <laughs> and they were like, Shima, really? I'm like, no, I am, not. guys, really? Come on. No, but that, that was, but, but some of them would understand that. Some of them would laugh at it, but the other people like, oh, Shima, oh, really? Um, but, you know, that, that, that's just because um, several reasons. I mean, China has thousands of years of history of mm. people just fall, up. following. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Dangko Xiang Sheng, Xiang Sheng, like crosstalk. That's the old uh, old form of stand-up comedy, but like these are people who have spent thousands of years just following orders. The emperor says, "We build a great wall," and they do. Okay, we'll do that. Mm -hmm. The emperor says, "You we need to fight build. Mongolia." Let's do that. The emperor says, "You know, we do this, do that, whatever." Everyone, yes, yes, yes. Uh, so they, you know, follow orders and. Uh, there really isn't any irony or social irony, I think, uh, as a result of that. So people are like, oh, really? Okay, okay, we'll do that. You know, and it, it's actually the essence of any uh, of working in a Chinese company. You do, you just do any you stupid. You do shit. what you're told to do. The boss tells you exactly even if yeah, you yeah. have something. It's a it's a hierarchy that goes from government to business, even to comedy. <clears throat> like everything is a social hierarchy. Uh, everything is power. Everything is, um, you know. Uh, yeah. During English uh, stand-ups mm -hmm. in China, have you ever experienced any police raids? Oh yeah, something. Oh like that? yes, I Can have. You it? Yeah. <laughs> so in two th in July 2015, uh, we started a new stand. So okay, so in Beijing, uh, we, we we used to do comedy shows at a place called the Hot Cat, uh, which was in the Hutong districts of Beijing. Really nice club. It was really good acoustics. You know, we had a nice stage. We had, you know, it was really, really good. Yeah, I like the name of the district. Yeah. Hutan. Hutong. Hutong. Ah, Hutong. 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 Like and uh, Fantong Hutong. Uh, 49. I uh, still remember the address. Uh, really good comedy club. Um, 
but it got closed down because of COVID. Uh, but we opened up a new comedy club, or not a comedy club, but we, we found a new bar where we could do uh, Wednesday night uh, open mics. So you also did the organization work, not only... Uh, a little bit, yeah, show. yeah. So I, I was very, mm. you know, I wanted to do more. You know, we had uh, the open mics on Monday at uh, the Hutong, but we found a new bar by the embassy district in Beijing. So we started doing uh, comedy there as well. And in July 2015, we had our first night ever to do, a ma and it was packed. It was, you know, everyone was so excited. The embassy staff, you know, from all the embassies in Beijing, they came to the show, and it was great. Now, what happened was there were two guys who were there, and they kept ordering frozen margaritas. <laughs> and, of course, when you're on stage... <laughs> You can't have a fucking blender going off every two minutes. <laughs> uh, so um, that night we had a very famous Chinese comedian on. Uh, his name was Joe Wang. Was, I know yeah, that guy. you know Joe Wang, the guy who did the uh, roast of Joe. Joe Biden. Biden, exactly. So he was on stage there, and I'm organizing the night. Joe Wang is on stage, and these guys are just ordering for. And, and, so they order a frozen margarita. I hear that they're ordering that, and I go up to the bar, and I say to the guy, hey, can you just wait maybe three minutes? Just let Joe finish his set, and then, you know, because we don't care, you know, but Joe Wong is a very important guy, so we want him to have a good and set. And Joe didn't say anything about Joe, that. of course not, of course not. I mean, like, he... Because he knows the way it works. Yeah, there. but he's a humble guy. He's very funny. He's very professional and everything, but I wanted to make sure he had a good set. So I go up to the bar, and I say, hey, guys, could you please just wait, like, just three minutes, man. Like, just wait until he finishes. And he was like, the bar guy was like, oh, yeah, no problem. Now, turns out, those two guys who were ordering margaritas were Communist Party members. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They didn't like the fact that a foreigner... Lose face. They first, lost face. They lost face, mm -hmm. and also a foreigner was telling them when they could and could not have their frozen margaritas. Lose face in China means that somebody uh, gives you disrespect or yeah. somebody mm -hmm. tells you to do something and you just it's, do it. It's basically worse than death for <laughs> people in China. I'm, I'm not... I'm, not yeah. I'm serious, man. That, that is Because really of this shit... Uh, there was a Chinese guy who nearly hit me with a with a bottle. I, at, the, <laughs> at the last moment, the uh, restaurant, uh, the, like the bartender, mm. saw and just stopped him, stopped me. But I was seconds. From, what did you, What did you do? I just didn't want to buy a rose from him. Actually, I thought he wanted to sell me the rose, yeah, yeah. and I like said, "No, we don't need this." And he just wanted to give it. And it's like I refused oh, taking the okay, talking. okay, and and it's terrible for Chinese person. It's like yeah, yeah. somebody no, the, just the, pees on you. Oh. Like <laughs> it's a very yeah. So we, yeah, we sorry, basically, so basically we um. I'm sorry, guys, but Dimon wants something yeah. to say. <laughs> no, <Whoa>. no, no. <laughs> <laughs> What's happening, Dimon? Tell us I, I everything. Want, I want to pee, guys. Sorry. <laughs> no worries. Uh, <laughs> I a... should explain about our uh, audience that we uh, shooting this podcast after the podcast uh, from New Year. Yeah. If you saw a New Year's podcast when we drinking and eating here with Alex Sukhanov and uh, Andre Pilat. Uh, it's the same day shooting a next podcast. Yeah, I still, should, I, should I still I, feel should, the energy should I of Alex. Should I finish Hano. the story? <laughs> <laughs> Let's uh, wait for the one and finish. I, I So where we stopped, uh, two communist guys or they, they didn't uh, like the fact. You yeah, told so them. basically, frozen when I when I said to the bar guy, I was like, "Hey, can you just wait? Can you give us like three minutes? You know, just to wait and let Joe Wong finish his set." So what they did was, um, they basically told on us. <laughs> mm -hmm. They called the police mm -hmm. and said, "There are some foreigners here doing comedy show." And they're saying bad things about the Communist Party. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we finished the show. Um, and then two guys show up, like plain clothes, not like police uniform or anything. Mm -hmm. um, and the bar manager says, like, Helgi, uh, you need to go and talk to these guys outside. I'm like, okay, sure. And I see the two guys and they're just wearing like slippers and shorts. And, mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, there's just some guys who are interested in comedy. Mm -hmm. And I was like, hey, guys, what's going on? I shake their hands, and they flash their badges. Mm -hmm. What the hell is going on in here? And I'm like, oh, they're not interested in comedy. <laughs> <laughs> they're here for a different reason. <laughs> so I was like, oh, just a comedy show. And he's like, 
you guys are here illegally. You guys are saying bad things about the Communist Party. And they basically... Um, now, the thing is, China technically, under law, has freedom of speech. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we know better. Um, but no, no, technically, under the law of China, you can have freedom of speech. So they could not arrest us for saying what we were saying. However, what they do was... Uh, we can check the visas of everybody there. So a lot of, you know this, a lot of foreigners yeah, yeah. in China stay on illegal visas. Um, <clears throat> so they Business did a, visa. Yeah, business visa or tourist visa, but they're working. So it's, you know. Um, but nobody really cares unless something happens. So it's a very Soviet system. It's like kind of like, like you know, they, 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 they don't care it's about... It's like a hook. Yeah, it's a hook. Yeah, yeah. If it's, you it, do sh- Yeah, if you do something, that. then they can use it. Mm-hmm. But otherwise, they don't really care. So, yeah, they did a visa background check on all of us. And, uh, you know, they basically said, like, you guys can continue doing these shows here. But if we, you have to be done by 11 p.m. And if we find out that you guys are continuing to talk bad about the Communist Party, we'll shut you down. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, so then uh, we decided, fuck this place. We're not going to do comedy here anymore. Um, And, you know, the bar staff was kind of not happy about that because it's like hey guys listen they understood they understood that mm-hmm. we were like we, we don't want any problems with this uh but i went back to beijing in 2019 and uh they still remember this story four or five years later uh so apparently this was like a very big scare for them mm-hmm. but i just like i mean at the end of the day you know whether it's russia or china or anybody i mean if you are a government with military and tanks and guns and you're scared of comedians, then your government is not doing okay. Mm-hmm. I remember, like, you know, John Stewart when he was in Egypt. Uh, <laughs> he was on, uh, do you remember this one when he went to, um, he did uh, Al Burnamak, the, the, mm. the Egyptian version of The Daily Show? And he said, like, if you, he said a very good sentence, which was, if you are a regime that cannot handle a joke, you are not a regime. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I think that goes for, you know, every country in the world. If you cannot handle a joke, then the problem with you is not the comedian, but the way you govern. Uh, yeah, I had a similar situation. Uh, in uh, I lived in uh, southern China, mm-hmm. and uh, during the open mic, uh, fortunately I wasn't at that open mic, but there came the police, and they made all the foreigners pass the urine analysis for which drugs. Is, which is illegal. Uh, in, it's, in, it's, right in front of them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Everybody did that because everybody was afraid they're going to check your visa and this, all this, this stuff. This, this and is, everybody had a legal. This is why I, I love the fact that I have. So my master's degree in China is actually a law degree. Uh, so international relations is, but it's part of the old Soviet system. If you so you know Chinese law. I know Chinese law. Yeah, that, that's that's illegal. Uh, if anybody had challenged them and said, no, this is illegal, they would have stopped. So it's they, like if somebody gives you the Chinese constitution, you can read it yeah, easily. Basically, yeah, basically, yeah. But no, that, that, that's, it's, it's, it, it is 100% illegal for them to do that. Uh, but they'll do it because, yeah, because people are scared of the government. We have in Russian and Ukrainian, we have the, the word kashmarit. <laughs> it's, it's like they try to scare you with yeah. something and show you the power. But you, you need to remember, first of all, governments serve you, not the other way around. You know, I mean, one of the things, um, you know, great example is Lukashenko. He, uh, <laughs> he just doesn't understand the fact that he is not God. Mm-hmm. He thinks he is. You know, when, when he orders a Ryanair flight... Uh, violating every single rule in the book from international freedom of travel, uh, freedom of the press. Uh, now, the thing is, when it, when an aircraft leaves, I think it was Italy, right? When he, they were leaving Italy, going to uh, Poland? Turkey. Turkey. Uh, was it Turkey? Oh, no, no, no. No, oh, no, no Lithuania. No, Lithuania. They were, it was on the way to Lithuania, but they left Italy, I think it was. Uh, maybe. Yeah. I'm not sure. So when, it, when an aircraft leaves a country, it is still in that country until it lands. Mm-hmm. So basically what Lukashenko did was he invaded Italy, <laughs> mm-hmm. technically. I mean, he ordered an aircraft to land in Minsk to detain some guy he didn't like. Like, are, are you familiar with the Streisand effect? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The Streisand effect basically was when Barbara Streisand uh, didn't like the fact that someone had uh, posted a picture mm-hmm. of mm-hmm. their um, of her house. So she complained and complained and went to the papers like this. And then it's like it became even more international news. <laughs> That's exactly what happened here. But 
All you need, you just also need to remember these are humans like you. You know, um, whatever happens in Mariupol or you know around the villages there, you know, yeah. I mean, I can't, I can't negotiate with a bullet, but with police, with military, you just need to remember these are also humans like you. So you you can't be afraid of them. You can't be. We uh, have a common saying: whatever happens in Mariupol stays in Mariupol. Ah, uh, <laughs> so that's. I'll I'll give you the full details of everything I'll do there then. <laughs> Uh, Helge, I, I have a question to you as yeah. uh, to the reporter. If you had a chance to make a documentary about Inner Mongolia uh, concentration camps, oh, would Xin, you agree Xin, to do the that? Xinjiang? Xin, no, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, Xinjiang. Xinjiang, Xinjiang. Xinjiang. absolutely. Uh, would you agree to do that? Absolutely, and how absolutely. would you do that in a funny way if you could? Um, that's a good question. Um, well, I mean, look... Uh, yeah, actually, what do you think when about... I, you know, when I is say... It, when is it true about all those concentration for, camps? Do you think it's true? Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, we have uh, human rights organizations who have um, said multiple... Uh, on occasions, multiple times, that uh, this what is happening right there um, is basically not same as Holocaust, but it is very similar tactics. Um, now, the Chinese government... Um, Basically, what they're doing is they're, they're trying to uh, sinicize or make everything more like China. So they don't want terrorist attacks like in Kunming train station, you know, where a guy shows up with a knife and stabs Chinese mm -hmm. people. They don't want the, uh, you know, unrest like in 2009. So on that level, I do understand. But the way they are doing it is completely unethical and completely just in regard in disregard to international law and everything that we stand for as people if i do a documentary on xinjiang um it would basically be to make fun of not what is happening but to make fun of the chinese government on that and to say that like it's very hard for the rest of the world to take the chinese government seriously when it handles things like this in the same way as a very, very scared little child. You say, like, you, you cannot on one hand say, we are China, we are, it's the Tang Dynasty, now we are the greatest country in ever, Xi Jinping, uh, we are the top China, we are so, we're going to invade Taiwan, fuck you, Japan, you know, all this. And then on one side, say, oh, yeah, but these guys who grill barbecues in uh, Xinjiang, uh, we have to send them to concentration camps because we're so scared of them. I mean, that really is. Why do you think they are scared of them? I don't think they're... Okay, so, so a part of it is that they're scared of terrorist attacks. Um, there's something called the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, mm -hmm. which is like uh, China's version of NATO. Um, it includes a lot of countries like Kazakhstan and mm -hmm. Russia. And like, so it includes a lot of countries. And basically their main aim is to tackle terrorism in East. So, mm -hmm. you know, anywhere from Dagestan to Shanghai. Um, so that level, you know, yeah, I do understand that, you know, they're trying to tackle terrorism. Um, so they don't want obviously terrorist attacks in their country, but I think the end goal, uh, of all of this, and this is not just with Xinjiang camps, it's also with the credit system, like giving people points, you know, for like mm -hmm. good behavior. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's ease of governments. It's to make sure the communist party, first of all, stays in power. The Communist Party can control all the people and that nobody says anything bad. And the way they do that is, first of all, through manipulation by saying, hey, look, if you're a good Chinese person, I'll make sure that your economy is good. You have a job. You can, you know, do everything you want. You say it in such a persuasive way that I want to become a good Chinese person. Yeah, but I mean, you, you, I mean, you guys lived under the same system. I mean, that was the whole uh, I, the format model of the Soviet Union, right? Hey, you have a job, yeah? Mm -hmm. You know, you have a house. You have to wait in line for a long time for bread, for everything. But at least we give it to you. Mm -hmm. And that kind of is the same model for the Chinese Communist Party. You know, you... Yeah, it's horrible. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I don't know why we so long talking about this. You're asking uh, <laughs> Iceland men that, how do you think 
uh, concentration uh, camps. Uh, camps. Let's it's go. Good or a, bad? Let's, let, let's, in 2022 years. <laughs> let, no, I, did, let, I didn't ask it's good or bad. Let, I, let's go I back to masturbation. If, uh, <laughs> I think. Uh, I ask if he believes in them because uh, Chinese media they say mm-hmm. there are no concentration and camps. When Maybe has, there are people who think that the there Chinese are no concentration media camps. Ever lied. <laughs> Мы же про уйгуров сейчас говорили, да? Да, да, да. So, I have a question about Iceland. Yeah. About Over. Iceland football. Yeah. All right. I heard some stories, but I don't know details. They're all they're all rapists. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Why? Why uh, uh, what's, what's the story? So the, uh, it's, all it, uh, it, team football from Iceland. Basically, what what happens when You tell a 20-year-old uh, athlete that he's God, mm-hmm. uh, and he can do whatever he wants. Yeah, mm-hmm. they, they abuse that power. Now, the thing is, uh, a lot of these things are still being investigated, but we do know Gilvis Egerson, uh, who played uh, in the UK. Uh, there was some instance where he was with an underage girl, right? Uh, there are uh, several other players in the Icelandic national team uh, who played in 2016 uh, who were... Um, You know, there, there was some... Inc- this was before the uh, the actual, like, tournament happened in 2016. So this was, like, 2012, 2010, 2011. Uh, but, yeah, there were a lot of instances where um, they apparently were, you know, drunk in other countries and were, you know, um, doing some bad things sexually to uh, other women. Uh, and they're they're saying things right now about... So, so it's still under investigation. It's still being discussed, but... Um, So you think some of them will go to prison? No, no, no. In Iceland, um, like, uh, I don't think prison necessarily, um, but definitely their entire reputation is tarnished. Um, so Because it's hard to prove that they did the rape. Yeah, well, it, it, it's uh, what's complicated. I mean, it's um, it's not that they're, you know, <laughs> it's, well, this is a very, very difficult question to answer. Um Yeah, no, I mean, they're definitely, I mean, first of all, most importantly, their entire reputation, they have named these people, these guys in the Icelandic football team who have done these things, right? So their reputation, first of all, is tarnished. Um, they probably will not play much more anymore. Um, but the the thing is, in Iceland, the the team became like God, Almost, you know, this is mm-hmm. exactly what we're talking about with governments, you know, whether mm-hmm. it's Russia or China or anybody. Um, when you at, every single time you put another human being on a pedestal, mm-hmm. when you say this human be- because he's government, because he's football player, because he's movie star, whatever, as soon as you say that person is better than me, they have that power, as we were saying earlier. You get a little bit of power and everybody abuses it. Hmm. I mean, the the whole reason why the, the you know nobody believed in the Soviet Union anymore in the 1980s was because they saw obviously that the government officials were living much better than the people. So they would go on you know camera and say like "workers of the world unite," and then they'd go drink cognac and eat steak. It's like no, the, 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 you obviously are a hypocrite. And I think that this is uh, this is so. This is another reason why I hate royalty. I hate the fact that there's kings and queens still in the world, like whether it's Spain or Norway or Denmark or, you know, even in the UK. It's like the fact that another human being by luck of birth is supposed to be better than you Mm -hmm. is one of the most ridiculous notions ever because we know as humans our faults. You know, if I get too drunk, I make stupid things. If I, Mm -hmm. you know, um, get power, I do stupid things. That's just me as a person, as a human being. Even if I have a job, that's more important, maybe. But I all I am always uh, the victim of my own flaws as a human being. Mm-hmm. So I think the same thing with the football team is that you know these guys, yeah, they 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 played good football. They were you know heroes for a little bit, uh, but I think they were just young guys who were put on a pedestal and who were told that they are the greatest thing you know since sliced bread. And um, yeah, I think some of them just kind of abuse that power. Mm-hmm. And now when the stories have come out, there are even people in Iceland who are saying things that, well, you know, I don't think that, uh, I don't believe these stories. These guys are still gods in my eyes. They're football players. How can football players do anything bad, you know? Mm-hmm. And I think it's bullshit.
Uh, Helgi, I have a question about Icelandic celebrities. There are two, like... Uh, First of all, there, there are no celebrities in Iceland. It's a small country. You do one thing and you're famous. <laughs> <laughs> my my, my yeah. dad my dad was the drummer for Björk. Just to really? Let you, just to let you know how, yeah, and, uh, how small this country what is. What do you think about Björk and what does your father... Maybe he has some stories about her or something. Uh, yeah, bro, I mean, I, I remember my, my, my grandma used to say that when my dad was the drummer with Björk... Uh, oh, uh, you... You said that your father is a showman, uh, like a builder, yeah, yeah. a blogger. And, and he's a drummer as well. Yeah, yeah, he, he, he's a drummer as well. So he was the drummer for the Sugar Cubes uh, back ah. in uh, uh, the early days. And my grandma was like, oh yeah, Björk was such a nice girl. Uh, your dad would bring her over for waffles on Sunday. <laughs> like, <laughs> so the, like, yeah, she would feed them and uh, they would have like Sunday brunch together. He learned in Los Angeles. He was... Uh, Showman in blog, yes, yeah, yeah, and dramas of Björk. Yeah, we we and uh, the constructor. It's, it's and a, the constructor. Yeah, it's, <laughs> in, so in Iceland, it's, it's, multi, it's multifunctional father, <laughs> multifunctional country. I mean, it's like it's, you meet it's, him it's, and it's he, a small he's country. like Shiva with so yeah. many. Hands. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> we're she, we're basically yeah, mm. uh, because Iceland is such a small country. Many people have different jobs. Mm -hmm. So like for me, I'm I'm a comedian, a Chinese mm. a journalist. Except for Chinese uh, Icelandic footballists, they yeah. are just rapists. Oh yeah, they're no, rapists. No no no. And, no, no. I mean, let, let's the set the players. let's set the record straight though. I mean, uh, like for example, uh, Hannes, um, uh, our goalkeeper who defended mm -hmm. the goal mm -hmm. against Messi, uh, <laughs> he is actually a uh, a filmmaker. So well, he was the guy. Who, so he that, was the guy yeah. who edited all the uh, the the films for the Icelandic national football team. And he uh, edited it uh, like the way he did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He just like it, it was. It was, from, it was him. You know, it was basically just <laughs> shots of him. Yeah, he made it himself. Yeah, uh, and also like um, there was a guy uh, on our national football team who worked for a salt factory in Iceland, mm -hmm. and he had to get permission from his boss to go play with the football team in mm -hmm. Europe. <laughs> Um, and yeah, so our our our, our the, the coach, uh, the trainer at the time, uh, he was also a dentist. So he was yeah, a dentist, and then in, the, somebody was a dentist. Yeah. So I mean, in Iceland, team. it's it's common for us to have different jobs because yeah, it's a small country. We just kind of you know. So Björk uh, was uh, the friend of your family. Yeah, you, yeah. She she was a coal miner, and no, no, <laughs> no, no. She, so she yeah, she was a friend of the family. She mm -hmm. um yeah, she was a singer, and my dad. Did played. you meet her when you were? No, no, I've never met her, uh, but my dad did. And uh, what 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 is she like? What was she like by then? Um, yeah, I mean, talented, very hipster, you know, very nice person. I I can imagine, um, you know, my uh, like uh, my family. We've met famous people in my family just by happen. It's like a, it's like a Forrest Gump story, mm -hmm. you know. So mm -hmm. we, uh, for example, uh, one of my best friends growing up in Los Angeles was mm -hmm. uh, Zoe Kravitz. The daughter of Lenny Kravitz. Mm -hmm. We were best friends growing up. Uh, I had no idea who Lenny Kravitz was, or you know Lisa Marie, her mother. Uh, but yeah, we were just great friends. Uh, my dad, you know, uh, was um, you know friends of Bjork, friends of uh, that family. Uh, my mom was a um, she was a masseuse in Los Angeles, so she would massage people. Mm -hmm. uh, and she and you know I remember meeting uh, Alec Baldwin at one point because mm -hmm. uh, Alec Baldwin she would massage him. Was he with a gun? Yeah. Uh, yes. Yes. He uh, Bruce Willis. Time. Bruce Willis as well. So she would massage Bruce Willis. Mm -hmm. uh, so a lot of people in Hollywood, you know. And uh, I mean, I didn't really know who that was at the time. You know, he would just showed up to our apartment, like, "Oh yeah, Helgi, how you doing? Uh, I just did a movie, and uh, it's uh, where I'm in an airplane, and it crashes, and then a bear shows up." I'm like, <laughs> you know, I'm just like eight years old. I don't really care about it. Um, but again, so, you know, so you are used to meeting celebrities. It's yeah, not yeah, yeah. I mean, of... but my my big one was Bill Burr. Like mm -hmm. when I met when when so Bill Burr was in Iceland doing a comedy show, and we, <laughs> we found out that Bill Burr was going to do our show at the comedy club. Every comedian showed up. We mm -hmm. were standing outside with our beers. It was <laughs> we, we were like children waiting for Santa Claus. <laughs> <laughs> so we stood out there like okay, okay. and then I saw him. And he's walking to the club, and I was like, okay, stay cool, stay cool, stay... And I couldn't stay cool. I'm like, <laughs> oh, Jesus! <laughs> Bill, bro, how you doing? <laughs> I'm just checking in on you. You know, and he was like, how you doing? Hey, you're a comedian as well. Yeah, yeah, I'm a comedian. I'm just like, I'm so embarrassed. <laughs> and then... Uh, because, again, small country, so everybody found out that Bill Burr was coming, so the whole comedy club was packed with people. 
And uh, my friend said to me, like, hey, Helgi, uh, you're on the lineup tonight. Do you want to open for Bill Burr? I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, please. <laughs> Did you kill him? Um, I did a five minute set. It was my best five minutes ever. I just, I, I was like, okay, okay. So, like, you know, we, we have our material ready. So, I was like, okay, well, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Okay, so that's uh, 30 seconds. And then, oh, yeah, yeah. And so, I went on stage, did a very good set. And then, Bill mm -hmm. Burr came on, and everyone was just, yeah! and he was like, all right, all right, lower your expectations. <laughs> And um, it was funny because there was a woman who was texting in the front row. And he's like, hey, hey, sweetheart, look, I'm, I'm doing a comedy. Like, there, there's, there's 12 people here. I need, I need your attention. And she said, um, actually, I don't really care for your misogynistic. And she just, mm -hmm. and everyone was like, oh, God, one of these cunts. <laughs> and, uh, and he said, okay, you don't like my material. That's fine. That's fine. Yeah, just text away. I hope you get thumb cancer. <laughs> that's the greatest line I've ever heard. But then, there yeah, were not but, so many people. Uh, well, yeah, it was it was packed. But you know, for Bill Burr, you know, he's used to mm -hmm. like much bigger audiences. Uh, but then uh, the night before his big show in Reykjavik, uh, he was in the green room. So he was sitting alone with a cigar, mm -hmm. just chilling. I I walk in. It's just me and Bill Burr. Mm -hmm. Bill Burr looks at me. He said, "Oh, hey." Great fucking set on Friday. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it's, like, it's like Jimi Hendrix saying to you, man, you're fucking good at guitar. <laughs> yeah, it's a great story. Uh, very pity that we don't have stories like this because we don't have Bill Burr in Ukraine or Louis C.K. didn't come. But, but, Louis you, but you have we are waiting Louis C.K. in February. Uh, really? Yeah. yeah. In he Kiev. was supposed to come two years before, but because really? of all well, the situation. We should text uh, Louis C.K. that we can uh, warm <laughs> audience for him. Yeah? him for the but Dimon have some stories. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Dimon uh, uh, warming yeah. up audience for Russian comedians. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, I saw Dimon face and he doing all shit as you said. Uh, oh, it's Vasi Medvedev. <laughs> So, so, sorry, know. what? Was that, uh, do it again. No, just <laughs> I don't know what he No, it's not the prime minister of Russia. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I saw you uh, I saw you in the bar <laughs> okay, after okay. a concert, Dimon. Uh, when was uh, there was Vasya Medvedev. Yes. And you uh, going like, oh, where is Vasya Medvedev? Where is Vasya Medvedev? I, I miss him. It's oh, like oh, now oh, they're having it's true some or kind not. of uh, it's true, yeah. relations. Vasya Medvedev is two of Tell us uh, this story. Yeah. <laughs> it's really good for our Ukrainian audience. Yes, please. No, please tell a story. It's not funny story. I, I wanna uh, ask you about. Uh, do you do you watch a movie, uh, Fire Saga? Uh, story oh, of Fire Will, Saga. Will Ferrell's. Yeah, well, yeah. What do you think about it? It's okay. That is the perfect analogy I can think of. Uh -huh. Is the way HBO did Chernobyl mm -hmm. for Ukrainians. Mm -hmm. So it's like yes, a lot of it is true, mm -hmm. but it's so Hollywood. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Right. So like yeah, mm -hmm. you know. Do, do you was in Husevik? No, no, I, I've been to Husevik several times. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's a beautiful, it's a really beautiful town. Uh huh. Um, really good, you know. Do you know that uh, they made uh, bar? Uh, yeah, yeah, don, yeah, yeah, ding dong, yeah, ding dong, yeah, yeah, ding dong. We we actually we had the guy uh, who said, yeah, ding dong. He was the guy who actually during Eurovision Song Contest mm -hmm. was the guy who was announcing the Iceland points. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he's like, twelve points go to <laughs> yeah, yeah, ding dong. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, yeah, no, it's a. Uh, uh, I think it was because uh, okay, so Will Ferrell's wife is Swedish, mm -hmm. so that's why he uh, pretends to have a Swedish accent every time during the movie. But the, the Icelandic accent is very hard and very sort of uh, uh, the, the are you tight and uh, hard mm -hmm. to pronounce. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, but um, uh, his co what was her name? Uh, the co-star uh, oh, um, um, Emily Roberts. Uh, uh, sorry, what's uh, it? Uh, Watson or Roberts? Or let, let's mm. let, let's get this correct because I want to make sure I mm. got her, her name right. Adams. Uh, will uh, make. Let's see. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Mm. Um, um, do Fire you, Saga. Do you see uh, uh, Fire Saga? Revision. No movies. Will Farrell. Uh, oh, I understand. Uh, mm -hmm. I uh, know this uh, film, mm -hmm. uh, but, no, but I, no, shit. I, I can't get can't get Wi-Fi. Adams, anyway. uh, M M M Emily Adams. Uh, maybe Emily Adams. Maybe. All right. Well, anyway, um, her, so Will Ferrell's co-star. She she 
she absolutely nailed the Icelandic accent. Mm -hmm. She it was perfect. Mm. Like the way she talked, the way she you know pronounced everything, it was absolutely perfect. Um, uh, but yeah, it, I mean, but you know, it was very obviously like oh, the elves and all that kind of stuff. Like mm -hmm. nobody in Iceland believes in elves. It's a, mm -hmm. it's a folk tale. It's a story. It's something we tell to tourists. And there's a superstition mm -hmm. in Iceland. Everybody believes in elves. Yeah, no, it's just, the superstition is that tourists think we do. That's the superstition. Mm -hmm. We we used to we used to believe in trolls and elves. And the reason <laughs> for that is you know if you're a Viking you know in the old times, uh, part of the reason is because the bread you ate, which was you know probably filled with mushrooms, you were high most of the time, mm -hmm. and you're riding back in the middle of the night on a horse, and you look you look at the mountain. That mountain is a fucking troll. <laughs> you're like that is a, that is a fucking troll. That's an elf. You know whatever. So yeah, they would believe in that. They would believe. In, now there are people who do actually believe in elves but it's like 10% of the country. It's very, very small. But we do it to sell it to tourists. Do you remember a song from this film? But who's specific? specific? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My hometown? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, it's true. When I uh, hear this song, I want to be Iceland. I Iceland. Really? <laughs> yeah, yeah, because it's a very beautiful song. I mean, the it, 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 it's kind of a... About uh, seagulls, about whales... Yeah, yeah, no, it's it's a it's a really my hometown, my hometown. <laughs> <laughs> so it's Husavik, yeah, Husavik, yeah. Uh, so guys, it's pity to say, but our podcast uh, goes to the end. Go. Oh, and, uh, it's uh, yeah, so yeah, bad news. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, I think uh, YouTube will be ban us for a song. Ah, so? turn, mm -hmm. turn off, turn off. Mm -hmm. <laughs> sorry, God. sorry. If, it's but, my recommendation. But you understand what, what song uh, they yeah, talking yeah, about, so you big. can uh, <laughs> listen this. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, for the end of our podcast, we uh, telling some recommendation for our audience what you should watch or what you should listen, what you should read, what you mm -hmm. should play, maybe some games, uh, every as you wish, every fun. Uh, that you want my recommendation fire saga uh, and song from this season from this movie uh can Very i good. can i can i shamelessly plug my own shit on this show uh, can i can i talk yeah okay cool yeah. uh my recommendation <laughs> check out uh unplugged borders on youtube which is my uh, original documentary on oh. oh yeah here we go <laughs> my recommendation is to check out unplugged borders on youtube Uh, and Helgi Steinar comedy on YouTube as well. <laughs> and my recommendation also is to be nice to each other and enjoy life. Yeah, links for these uh, themes will be in uh, this video. Yeah, All description right. of this video. Orochi. Yeah, Alex. Uh, my recommendation is a movie called uh, Mysterious Skin. I don't remember the director of the movie. The name of the director. Mysterious Skin? Yeah, Mysterious Skin. It's about a gay guy who moved to the big city. Oh. Yeah. Very good. <laughs> Very good recommendation. Was Very he, was detail. He, uh, was, 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 he, uh, was he the only gay in the village? Uh, no, no, not the only one. <laughs> Uh, I one more time recommended uh, play the game Dead Stranding because it's uh, you know this game. No, I, it's I the game, game of uh, yeah. Hideo Kojima, and uh, there is uh, you play some delivery guy in a post-apocalypse world, mm -hmm. and uh, it's look like uh, Iceland, uh, <laughs> yeah, which real. is very post-apocalyptic <laughs> as well. No, real, real, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the, uh, Landscapes. Landscapes. Landscapes yeah, yeah. Uh, like uh, very familiar. Uh, the Hideo Kojima, when he uh, doing this game, he... Uh, he was inspired. Inspired, inspired oh, right, right, yeah, right, 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 right. with the Iceland landscapes. Okay, okay. So, everyone should try it. Yes, and I recommend that as well. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> so, right. the, there is the end of our podcast. Helgi, you want to say something yeah. uh, for the end? Budma Ukraina. Дякую, що ви прийшли. Все, дякуємо вам, що дивилися цей прекрасний подкаст. З нами, як завжди, був Дмитро Білоус, Алекс Качура і сьогодні прекрасний е, ісландський комікс. Комікс. <laughs> Комік е, Хельгі Стейнер. Yeah. Все, дивіться його стендап, дивіться його документальні фільми. Підписуйтесь на підпільний стендап, залишайте коментарі. До нових зустрічей, панове! Музика